You know that Joseph was a foreshadowing of Jesus because his father sends him out of Hebron, which means alliance or friendship or fellowship, right? Jesus was sent out of fellowship with the father to earth, right? So that's what what we see here. And then we see that even furthermore, his brothers conspired to murder him. They stripped him of his tunic. This is exactly what happened to Jesus. And, and then we see this. He was sold for pieces of silver by who? Who did this? Judah came up with this plan. Well, the name Judas derives from the name Judah. So there is no way that any human being could have weaved all of this together in Joseph's story And to compare with Jesus, because there's even more. Because when he was put down in that place of the condemned later, what happened? There were two condemned with Joseph when he was in that prison, right? When he was falsely accused and put down there. Well, one of them is restored to the king. The other is cursed to death. The the cupbearer was restored to the king. What does that remind you of? Jesus was crucified with two. One of them turned to him and said, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you this day, you will be with me in paradise. Joseph's story is a huge picture of Jesus. And I actually wrote a book on it right here. You And it was about 10 years ago that I wrote this book. And there's so many details about how Joseph is like Jesus. You can get this on Amazon or down in the description below if you wish. But uh, we're going to get into that in this episode. We're only going to go through Genesis chapter 37 and just a few more verses. And if you missed the last one, check out part one of this series. Of, we're doing a series right now of how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. And now we're in Joseph's story, my favorite. <laughs> Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, you might want to hit that button and the bell. We're doing a series right now, Jesus in the Old Testament. You won't miss anything. Check out the former videos as well, the the last ones, and comment with your questions or any comments. I love to respond to those, and I love to see them. So let's get into this presentation, you guys. All right. So, hey, by the way, Joseph's story takes up one-fourth or 25% of the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, right? Bereshit, if you're in Israel. Why would God do that? That would be like you getting your four-year bachelor's degree in ancient history and then spending the entire fourth year, the whole senior year, on one man, and that would be Yosef or Joseph. And why did God do that? He did that to show you something, to show me something that is a foreshadowing, a picture, a portrait of Jesus, of Yeshua HaMashiach, if you're in Israel. That's what we're looking at right now, you guys. Let's get into the episode now. And this is so exciting. So Yosef and Yeshua, part two, comparing them, right? There's the series, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. And now we're going to go into Genesis chapter 37. And it's it's so exciting because you're going to see a picture of what leads up to the cross in this episode. Here we go. And then in, chapter, in verse 9 of chapter 37, it says, Then he had yet another dream and informed his brothers of it and said, Behold, I have had yet another dream. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. So, <laughs> so Joseph tells them the 11 stars, that would be the brothers, because Joseph was the, uh, I, he was actually the 11th brother, but then there was Benjamin, remember? And then Joseph would be the, actually the, or Benjamin would be the 12th brother. But he sees 11 stars bowing down to him, right? And then the moon and the sun, what is this picture of? It's a picture of Israel. And how do I know that? Because the Bible interprets the Bible, because Jacob tells us that. Let's check it out. But first, we're going to go into Revelation 12. And this is why I love this, because the Bible explains the Bible, you guys. This is what this is about. This is what my channel, that we do this together, this channel is all about using the whole Bible, the whole counsel of God, the Old Testament 
and the new, which is really one testament about Yeshua HaMashiach, if you're in Israel, or Jesus Christ, the Messiah, right? That's what the whole Bible's about and his redemptive story. And that's why we love that, because we use the Bible to understand the Bible. So let's go back into Revelation right now. Look at this. Revelation chapter 12. A great sign appeared in heaven, and a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and her head a crown of 12 stars. So what is that if you're reading Revelation? Well, Genesis tells us it's Israel, and you're going to see that here in a moment. Watch this. And she was pregnant, and she cried out, bearing in labor and in pain to give birth. And she gave birth to a son, a male, who is going to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. That speaks of Jesus, the child, right? We know that for sure. And some have interpreted this, Revelation 12, this part of it, as being Mary, the mother of Jesus. No, that's not it. Or the church. No, that's not it either. It's only Israel, because the Bible tells us that this image, this picture that John sees in Revelation 12, this vision that he sees, the Bible tells us it's Israel because we're in Genesis 37. You're about to see it. Watch this. Here it is. So <laughs> we know it's Israel because Jacob says this to his son, Joseph. So he also told it, Joseph also told this to his father as well as to his brothers, this dream that he had, right? And his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have had? Am I and your mother and your brothers actually going to come to bow down to the ground before you? So what he's saying is, I, like it's Israel. Jacob's name was Israel and his his 11 brothers were the patriarchs, the fathers of what? The nation of Israel, you guys. This is so awesome. This is why I love doing this with you. And his brothers were jealous of him. His brothers were jealous, right? Or envious of him. But his father kept the matter in mind. Then his brothers went to pastor their father's flock in Shechem. So Shechem is this area to the north of Jerusalem in the land of Israel. And this is an area where Joseph went to go, uh, you're going to see he went to go look for his brothers here. But first it says that his brothers went here with the father's flock. And Israel said to Joseph, are your brothers not pastoring the flock in Shechem? Come and I will send you to them. And he said to him, I will go. So Joseph is showing perfect obedience right here, just like Jesus did with the Father. He, he was willing to go to the cross, even though he knew that his own would kill him, his own would crucify him, Israel, right? Jesus knew this, but yet he leaves the perfect fellowship with the Father to go down to, on this rescue mission to save Israel and many many alive this day. So then that's what we see in this, you guys. It's so beautiful. God's God's painting and his portrait here, filling up 25% of the book of beginnings, Genesis, this one man, Yosef, or Joseph, showing a picture of who? Yeshua or Jesus. Here it is. Watch this. Let's get into it some more. So he says, I will go in perfect obedience, right? And then he said to him, go now and see about the welfare of your brothers and the welfare of the flock and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron and he came to Shechem. Now, here's Joseph. He, he left the valley of Hebron to go here up here to the north to go find his brothers in Shechem. So what does that word Hebron mean? Hebron, you guys, my friend, means friendship, alliance, or fellowship. And Joseph showed perfect obedience. He went out of fellowship and friendship and alliance with his father in Hebron. That's what it means to go to these brothers who hated him, who despised him, who wanted to murder him, to go see if it was well with them and to check on the father's flock. That's exactly what Jesus did, you guys, when he came down from heaven. This is so 
Beautiful, you guys. So he sent him out of Hebron down into Shechem. And that's what we see here. So let's get back into the verses. Verse 15. And a man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, what are you looking for? He said, I am looking for my brothers. Please tell me where they are pastoring the flock. Then the man said, they move, They have moved from here, for I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. Doth, Dothan, my friend, means something very important here in this scripture. And this is beautiful because Dothan means laws, edicts, decrees, laws, customs, or double feasts. We know that the religious leaders were stuck in the law. They were stuck in all of their customs and rituals and the law, uh, you know, not even letting the God, the Son, the Messiah come to heal people on the Sabbath. Oh no, that's against the law to work on the Sabbath. And Jesus rebuked them for that. But here we're seeing it in Joseph's story. He finds them pastoring the father's flock in Dothan, which means edicts, decrees, laws, customs, and double feasts. Wow, what a picture. So Joseph went after his brothers and he found them at Dothan. And I want to point this out in Matthew chapter 27, verse 18. We know that Jesus was before Pontius Pilate and the Jewish leaders were rallying the crowds, tricking them and, and influencing them, manipulating them to crucify Jesus. And this is when he was about to bring Barabbas before the crowd so that this murderer Barabbas would be the one that would be, mur- would be crucified instead of Jesus and Jesus would be set free. But the crowd insisted because the religious leaders manipulated the crowd and had them yell out, crucify Jesus, let Barabbas go. But it says here that Pilate knew, it says, for he knew that it was because of envy that they had handed him over. That's exactly what happens in Joseph's story. It was because of the envy and the jealousy of his brothers, their hatred for him because he was the father's most favored son. Jesus was also the father's most favored son. And so what do they do? They conspire to murder him. And by the way, Barabbas was let go. He was free to go and Jesus was crucified. Did you know that we, you, and me, were actually a picture of Barabbas? Because we have sinned. We fall short of the glory of God. We have failed. We have done these evil deeds, all of us. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. None of us can keep the law except for Jesus did. And we get to go free, set free, because he did the heavy lifting on the cross Jesus was the one who took the wrath of God that we all deserved because of our sin. He took it upon himself so that we would not have to face the wrath of God at all. In fact, when we die, we can go to heaven and be with him and the Father in paradise, in heaven. Just like that criminal that was on the cross who said, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you this day, you will be with me in paradise. Wow, (laughs) that is powerful, you guys. Would you like to be in paradise with Jesus? Would you like to go to heaven? Are you trying to keep the law and you can't and you know it? Well, you could be clothed in Jesus's righteousness. You could give your life to him and you're gonna have an opportunity to do that in just a couple of minutes because I'll lead you in a prayer where you pray to God and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and be saved, to be clothed in his righteousness, to take, to be set free. And then he did the heavy lifting on the cross and you accept that free gift from him, which is grace, getting that, that gift that you don't deserve. I don't deserve it either. That's what grace is, getting something really good that you don't deserve. And that's what Jesus did for us on the cross. And that's what we're seeing in this picture in Joseph's story, because Joseph was a picture, a type, a foreshadowing of Jesus, the Messiah. And this is so, so beautiful. All right, my friend. Hey, if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that right now. 
you can say this prayer to God. You would be praying to God right now. Would you like to do that? If you would, stop what you're doing and say this prayer. Just say these words after me. You are praying from your heart to God. All right, here we go. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I'm sorry for my sin. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I believe that you shed your blood for me. And I also believe that in three days you were raised from the dead and you are alive today. And I choose to follow you as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward, from this moment forward. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, my friend, if you did that, congratulations. Heaven rejoices right now for what you did. So, hey, make sure you're getting involved in a Bible-believing or Bible-teaching fellowship or a church. If you're in Israel, go to One for Israel. They're really good. Or go to Jews for Jesus. They will disciple you, teach you how to be a Christian, and they have great literature for you. If you're in America, just make sure you go to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, and you get fellowship with other believers, and you pray every day and keep that relationship going. Keep it alive with Jesus. I love you guys. I love you. I'll see you next time. Hey, by the way, don't forget, hit this playlist right here, Jesus in the Old Testament. You don't want to miss a thing, you guys. And you can go back and check the previous episodes. I think you'll be blessed by it. Love you guys.